this thing came from another shop that did some work on it and all that it needs is a wheel alignment because i understand that they replaced a uh like a lower control arm or something so i'm not going to do any inspecting or diagnosing that's crunchy literally i'm not going to do any, any inspecting or diagnosing i'm just going to throw this mofo on the alignment rack get the heads on it and uh and geometrically align the suspension components so stay tuned this should be good do a real quick damage walkthrough for my protection of all the all the somewhat broken stuff that I see here there's some there's some more there's some there's some okay okay begin and this is a Honda CRV, not CRZ. Let's go. And it's an 08 model, front wheel drive. And it's gonna prompt me to mount the sensors. There we go. This rack is a four post rack, one in each corner. It's calibrated to be level when it's set down on the locks. So I'm going to raise this up to a comfortable working height and then set it down the locks. That way the vehicle is on a known flat and level surface. This is critical for doing a suspension alignment. Okay, and down. All right, both ramps should be flat and level on both sides. Now let's install the reflective head. The way this works is there are a series of lasers and cameras up top here. It shines the beam at these reflectors and then the beam reflects back to the cameras and that is how it measures the direction that the wheels are pointing. Now that all four sensors are mounted, the machine recognizes that they are installed. We now have to compensate for runout on the heads in relationship to the wheels because they're not perfectly flat on the wheels. So we're gonna do that by rolling the vehicle backwards. It has already taken a picture of the orientation of the heads as it sits now. I will roll it backwards a few inches and then it will take another picture of that orientation. And then that will calculate how much runout is on the head versus wheel. Grass turn green. And it was set. I was thinking about it. I moved it back a little bit further. Okay, it took its second picture, so now I'm gonna roll it back forward to the beginning point. It'll take one more snapshot, and that's gonna be the measurements that it needs to calculate the head versus wheel run out. It now wants to measure the caster angle, and that is done so by turning the wheels left according to the graph, and then turning them back to the right according to the graph. Similar to how it measures the run out, it'll take a photograph of before, once it reached swing and then back to center again. These plates are called turn plates and they support the wheel, which are supported by ball bearings inside. That being said, these can move independently from the base and are held in position with these locking pins. In order to make adjustments or to measure caster that we just talked about, I have to remove these locking pins.
The wheels cannot be allowed to rotate at any point during this procedure. So I'm going to install this brake pedal depressor to keep braking pressure on the calipers, preventing the wheels from, from rotating. So I'll set that up, give it a push, tighten it. All right, we're good here. Now I can throw this in park and I always like to depress the parking brake. We'll start the engine and we will look outside and use power steering to make the, uh, the turn for the adjustments. And I'm sorry if there's wind noise in this van up here. All right, we're going back to the right now, past the center line. There's green, okay, so get the picture. And we're moving back to center line now, too far, too far twice. There we go. Okay, we've got our measurements. Now, back in the car, I'm gonna visually orient the steering wheel so that it is centered. And I do that by backing far away, finding a plane to compare to, and I will just manually eyeball how level this is. Once I feel it's level, I'll give it a shake to work out any play that may be in the, uh, in the steering shaft or in the suspension. Everything seems to be settled. And now we can go ahead and begin the procedure. Okay, over here, we're looking at a numeric display of the alignment measurements. The far left column identifies which measurements are being displayed, and that is divided into front and rear wheels. The far right columns that contain the green and red bars indicate in degrees the measurements of each individual wheel. The green highlighted measurements show that that measurement is within specifications and the red highlighted measurements show that that measurement is out of specification. What we see in this readout is that the right rear toe and both front toe measurements are out of specification. Toe is the left and right orientation of the wheel in relation to the vehicle's center line. I'm going to start by adjusting the rear toe and I want to match up the one that is out of spec to the one that is in spec. So this negative means that the wheel is pointing away from the center line. Positive means it's pointing towards the center line. So I'm gonna go adjust the right rear and bring that in to the left so it matches the six on this side. And then both wheels will be even with each other. After that's done, the front wheel numbers are going to change because the machine bases its measurements for the fronts on whatever the rears are doing. Okay, we're under the vehicle now at the right rear. The provision for the adjustment is this right here. There's a locking nut on this, uh, on this bolt, and then there's an adjustment cam here. You can see how the edge of this cam is offset in relation to the center line of the bolt. So as this turns, it will move that bolt left or right, which will in turn affect the relationship of the, of the steering knuckle, or the, or the spindle in this case, to the control arm and that will give me an adjustment to move the wheels left or right. So let's crack it loose. It does not need to be removed and shouldn't be removed. But we'll break it loose. And I want some positive toe out of this so I want this knuckle to go that way. So I will move this cam in this direction, forcing the wheel outward. Okay, I just took a glance at the numbers and I'm at positive 17, so I actually went too far. I'm gonna back it back off. Okay, it's negative one, too far again. These measurements are very finicky and fine. Positive three. Like positive seven, I'll take that. Now I can lock it down. And that will complete the adjustment for the right rear. All right, let's go up front, take a look at the computer and take a look at the, uh, the front toe. Okay, we can see here that there has been some slight adjustment from the original set of numbers. Rear toe that we just adjusted, that's at six and seven. 
that is nearly as perfect as it can get. So next I'm going to adjust the front toe and I always like to start with the number that's farthest out of wax. So that's going to be the 78 right here. Also, I got ahead of myself. I did not show what the specified numbers are supposed to be. So that's going to be found here in vehicle specifications. And it looks like total toe for the rear, it wants 16. So that's roughly eight and eight on each side. We're within spec there. And the total toe for the front is going to be zero. So it wants them truly parallel to each other. So we're going to bring this to zero or close to it. And we're going to bring this to zero or close to it. Uh, a rule of thumb that I have is I never let front toe or rear toe go with a negative number. I always like to keep it slightly positive if, if possible. And I do that because a positive toe towed in towards the center line will provide a more stable ride than a negative toe. A negative toe will tend to want to be aggressive with its steering and a positive toe will want to be stable with its steering, especially when recovering from a turn. All right, back down below again on the driver's side. We're gonna make our adjustments at the tie rod. I'm gonna break loose this jam nut here and rotate the inner tie rod. And that is going to thread in or out. In this case, I'm gonna be threading it out because I wanna bring the tire pointed towards the center line in the front. And once that's completed, I'll lock down the jam nut again and that will complete the adjustment for this wheel. Then I can move on to the passenger side. Someone put thread lock on that. You see that yellow stuff? Why? Why would you put thread lock? As I'm making this adjustment, I'm actually watching the screen. And I'm watching the numbers come down from that 79. We're down to 13 now, negative 13. Negative five, four, three, negative one, and positive two. I'm gonna lock it down right there. So I'll tighten up this jam nut again. Secure it. Okay, so the, the toe moved up to positive 0 0.03 right here. That's okay, that's, uh, that's still well within specifications. And checking the screen, you see we're at positive three on the left front. All that's gonna be left to do is set up that right front and this suspension will be perfectly geometrically aligned. Okay. Okay, we're starting off at positive 32. So we want to bring this negative. He feels it. All right, we're down to positive 10. Positive three, two, one. A little too far, I'm gonna back off some because I want to match it up with the driver's side. We are now at positive two. I'll take that. It's actually 0 0.02. It's measured in degrees. Lock it down, good to go. Okay, all the adjustments are complete. Let's go for a check ride and make sure everything is in good shape here. That's beautiful. Let's print the results. That way I can prove that I actually did my job. Okay, now it's time to pull the heads off, let the car down, go hit the road. That was the wind. Okay, I have to raise this up off of the locks, release the locks, and then let it down. All one-handed, because skills. Done. Okay, the remainder of this chore will consist only of a test drive to verify that I did a good job. 
And the way I will do that is take it out on the road, get it on a flat level road, center the steering wheel, and we're looking for the thing to not track left or right, and we're also looking for a straight steering wheel while going straight. So none of this, none of this, none of even that, none of that is acceptable. It must be almost perfectly straight, at least by my standards. Blowing horn for safety while backing out. Okay, rolling through the parking lot. Straight level wheel, and we are going straight. And I better turn, because there's a tree. Do this, uh, do the wheel test again right here. Straight and level wheel, going straight. Dumpster. For the record, I will mention that if you guys hear all kinds of croaks and greens and groans and pops and noises and whatever else while we're driving this, um, none of that is on me. This is not my shop's car. They were, uh, we're outsourcing for someone else because we have an alignment machine and they don't. All right, again, straight level steering wheel, hands off the wheel, and we're going straight. Road's turning, but I'm not, so let's, let's correct. There we go. All right, this thing's good. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna spin this thing back around and get it back into the shop. My AC's blowing hot air. Might as well just turn that off. Poor man AC time. All right. Man, this thing shakes like super bad. It speeds above 45 or 50. It's I feel it in the floor, in the pedal, the steering wheel, the whole thing's super, super shaky. I hope they didn't want a wheel alignment to resolve the shakiness. Like I mentioned earlier, they said they replaced a control arm, but the ones that I saw down there didn't look very replaced. Uh, it could have been changed with a junkyard part, uh, but I don't know. Regardless of what the circumstances are, I have completed what was requested of me. I did a wheel alignment, did as perfect as I could, and that is done. I verified on my test drive and I am headed back to go park this thing. So all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. If you guys like this video, please let me know about it by tapping tapping that thumbs up button. If you didn't like this video or didn't like anything that I did in this video, or if you don't like me, please feel free to let me know about it in the comment section down below. So again, thank you guys for watching and as always, don't forget. Have a great day. See what I did there? That was motorist safety. <laughs>